I've been following this story. I told y'all that I was going to stay on top of it. I actually have it written down in my notes right there on my little um, orange sticky pads. I got a whole bunch of notes on my orange sticky pads. And her name was Sade Robinson, I believe. Anyways, she met this man, just jogging y'all memory really quickly before we go into the story. She met this man. He was a bartender. He didn't look like that. That's his jailhouse blues, but he was a bartender, and she was a woman that decided that she wanted to go out, have a little fun, and then do a little bit of swirling. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of swirling. And that's her right. I believe that anybody and everybody should go where they are appreciated and not where they tolerated. But she wasn't appreciated here. She was looked at as food. Let me say that again. She was looked at as food. And so what happened was she met this man at the bar. Eventually, she went back to his house. There was another woman that actually substantiated the fact that he had a little sex dungeon in his crib. But it turned out to be one of the worst decisions of her life. And un unbeknownst to her, now her body parts are starting to wash up ashore and her family is now being notified. I want to keep you guys up to date on what's going on out in these streets. Uh, again, make sure you hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Um, this is the sad story of body parts still being found to this young lady. Uh, who mistakenly picked the wrong person to go home with over in uh, Wisconsin. That's our big story in nine. A severed arm washes ashore on a beach in Illinois, and the family of a Milwaukee woman killed say they believe it belonged to her. Fox 6's Bria Jones joins us here in studio to share how the family of Shade Robinson says the connection is being made. Well, Ben, Steph, we just learned minutes ago from the Lake County Court in his office that arm is believed to belong to a female. Now, overwhelming is how Shade Robinson's mother is describing all of these new developments. She says that the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office notified her days ago about this discovery, and now they are awaiting DNA results. As detectives work to unravel Shade Robinson's tragic slaying in Milwaukee County, a new body part is being linked to the investigation. It's excruciating. Authorities in Illinois tell Fox 6 a severed human arm was discovered at Waukegan Municipal Beach on Saturday. While the arm is not confirmed to be Robinson's, officials say it may be related to a case in Wisconsin. Robinson's family says they were contacted by the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office as DNA results pinned. The family is still struggling quite a bit and really, really needs prayers at this time. Dr. Erica Brown is a friend of Robinson's mother. And unfortunately, that was something that my friend found out on Mother's Day. Prosecutors say Robinson was found dead and dismembered following a first date with her accused killer, 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson. She was last seen alive April 1st. Since then, body parts all believed to be hers have been found scattered across Milwaukee County. News of this latest discovery in Illinois. State of Wisconsin versus Maxwell Anderson. Coming as Anderson makes another court appearance. A judge granting his defense attorney more time to review evidence handed over by the prosecution. Candidly, we can't figure out a, a strategy until we've gone through everything. A slow turn to the will of justice as the search continues for all of Robinson's remains. The family still actively searching. Just wanting closure and wanting this to be able to move forward. Anderson's next court date is set for July 12th. Robinson's family members say they will now be focusing their search tomorrow at beaches in Racine County. Steph. Bria, thanks for that. Meanwhile, MATC will honor Robinson at their commencement Sunday. She had completed her degree in criminal justice. Her family plans to receive the diploma and walk across the stage in her honor this weekend. And that's unfortunate. It's very, very much unfortunate because uh, no, nobody, and I mean absolutely nobody, deserves. Thank you, Super Dad. I see you just joined the Patreon. Shout out to all of the new bag chasers. Uh, I rock out with you. Nobody deserves to get a phone call on Mother's Day or any other of the 365 days of the year saying that, hey, we starting to discover some of, your, some of the body parts of your daughter being found and washed up across the beach and in force across Wisconsin. And the monster who did it is the dude that's at the bottom of your screen right here on the left-hand side. Nobody. Nobody should be getting that phone call uh, at all. And I think that, again, is messed up. And some of the more demonic crimes, and that's the only way that you can describe them as demonic, 
some of the more demonic crimes that's taking place across the United States of America, uh, it's head scratching. It really is, because I don't even understand the logic behind just killing somebody out of deviancy. Like defending yourself, getting into a scuffle, all of that stuff, okay. Gang activity is dumb as hell, but I see why they doing it because they fighting over territory often at times. You know, drug territory in order to be able to try to run up a bag or whatever, or they've been deceived and all of this other stuff, right? When I hear of people just killing women, innocent women, or killing innocent elder people or kids and stuff like that, it's no rhyme or reason. Like, often at times, the reasons are dumb why people die every single day. But this is just no rhyme or reason, and I don't understand it. Why would you have to take somebody else's life? It's crazy, bro. But that's not the only wild story that's happening out here in these streets. Even UPS drivers is catching hell. A UPS driver is shot and killed in the middle of the day while out on his normal route in an industrial complex in Irvine. Witnesses heard the gunshot, saw the shooter, and tried to help that driver, but it was too late. KTLA's Chris Wolf live in Irvine with the latest on a developing story tonight, Chris. Yeah, Micah and Chiaris, as you said, this is an industrial area. The UPS truck and the victim's body are still out here on the scene not far behind me. This has been a very long and painstaking investigation since that UPS driver was shot dead around three this afternoon. Hey, I got a question. Did, wasn't UPS, wasn't the drivers of UPS the ones that just got a race? Let me see something, UPS driver race. <sighs> yeah, UPS workers approved the $30 billion labor contract. And they was talking about how UPS drivers um, eventually will make over $170,000 in pay and benefits. Well, it certainly ain't worth, worth your life, uh, depending on where you're driving, I'll tell you that much. As I zoom in here, we got a flashbang going on here. A deadly shooting, an explosive standoff with the murder suspect. This was a fateful Thursday in Irvine. It all started around 3 p.m. in an industrial pocket not far from a popular shopping mall, Irvine Spectrum Center. Business owners and employees tell us their regular UPS delivery man was parked along the curb on a lunch break. He was in the driver's seat, the door wide open, when another man pulled up in a pickup truck and shot the UPS driver with a barrage of bullets. One man working nearby says he thought he was hearing a jackhammer which he later learned was rapid gunfire. The driver of the suspect vehicle never got out of the car, just reached across the passenger seat and shot the driver through the window. Investigators say nothing was stolen and this appears to be a targeted hit and not a robbery turned deadly. Irvine police officers first on the scene pulled the victim out of the truck and tried to revive him, but he was already gone. I just seen him like about 10 minutes right before that happened. He dropped off a package for us. He was Asian. He was a, he was a real good friend of mine. Uh, he came by every day and he uh, dropped off our packages and he was... Uh, Did he say he was Asian? Let me, let me rewind it. About 10 minutes right before that happened, he dropped off a package for us. He was Asian. He was, uh, he was a real good friend of mine. Uh, he came by every day and he uh, dropped off our packages and he was, uh, you know, he had a family. He was a good man. A couple hours later, Orange County deputies spotted the pickup parked at Santiago Canyon Road and the 241. Apparently, the shooting suspect was holed up in the back seat. SWAT teams closed in and used flashbangs, canine teams, and high-powered weapons to overcome the man and pull him out of the truck. Sky 5 was overhead during the capture. Witnesses say the suspect had been wearing dark clothing and a medical face mask at the time of the shooting, but was only wearing dark pants and a blood-soaked white t-shirt at the time of his arrest. So did the two men know each other? What possibly could have been the motive for this deadly shooting? Investigators certainly hope to get those answers from the suspect. Somebody said, timeout says, why does him being Asian matter? Oh, it all matters. Every single detail matters, 100%. And one of the reasons why a lot of this matters, um, because apparently it looks like the, the killer was Asian also, so it might have been a crime of familiarity and it wasn't just targeted 
uh, based off of opportunity. You, you see what I'm saying? And so when you start to put together your context clues and you look at all the details behind who, who's doing what and why they're doing it, it 100% matters. Maybe he had a gambling debt. Maybe he just so happened to be the wrong place in the wrong time, mistaken identity. Maybe they knew each other. Maybe somebody busted down somebody's baby mom when he was delivering the package. I don't know. Who knows? Whatever. But in my opinion, personally, I don't believe that anybody that pulls over to eat their lunch on a lunch break in a UPS truck just deserved to be taken out like that. That's crazy. So if y'all want to get these jobs, then you also got to deal with the possibility that somebody is going to be pulling up next to you and unloading a barrage. Maybe it was a crime of familiarity and they know who the person was. Maybe not. You ready to take that chance? You want that $170,000 in benefits? <laughs> <laughs> oh man it is rough out here in these streets bro good god unreal anyway so that's what's happening over in california and over in wisconsin just keeping you guys up to date on what's going on in these streets bro it's crazy out here in these streets